And so uh, what I sh uh, should have said that whilst I was uh, doing the uh, captain's conversion course, um, much to the disapproval of my senior uh, officer, uh, I got married to the American lady um, that uh, came over to, of course, live in UK and, and join the service. She had some experience of service life because her father, um, who was not any longer in the American Navy, but had gone through Annapolis, uh, the American Dartmouth, uh, and served uh, some time in the Navy before medical reasons he, he, he left. So there was some service background on that, as it were, side of our couple. Um, so, uh, so after two years at, uh, at Benson, uh, I, well, I had already said that I would like to become in, in my various annual reports of what I would like to do next, but was selected to uh, go on the uh, instructor's course. Uh, uh, and at that time, the Central Flying School, CFS, was based at Little Risington, and of course a lovely part of the country. Um, uh, so I initially went up to RAF Manby uh, in, North, uh, in, in North Lincolnshire to refresh on the, uh, f my flying on the Jet Provost. Um, that was fairly concentrated, uh, uh, I forget now how long I was there, but, uh, and then from there went to Little Risington, uh, lived in a charming village, uh, uh, Cotswold village, um, in, in rented accommodation of course, uh, and uh, went through the uh, basic instructor's flying course. Uh, how did I find it? It had its moments of uh, I having to work very hard to meet the standard in, in certain aspects of it, uh, but the fact remains is one did survive uh, and was then posted uh, to uh, Granwell. Uh, so my first tour uh, of instructing was actually at Cranwell, uh, which I was delighted uh, to, to do. Uh, and during that time, uh, I progressed from uh, a straightforward uh, qualified flying instructor, uh, progressed up to, in due course, up to an A2 qualification, um, in theory, above average instructor, uh, became uh, and became a flight commander. Uh, so uh, and it was generally, a, well it was overall, a thoroughly enjoyable um, uh, tour. Uh, during that time uh, there were um, a number of Saudi Arabian Air Force, uh, all uh, princes, uh, one or two now very senior, um, were going through at the time. Uh, I had association with one. I wasn't his instructor, but when I was a flight commander, I taught him the formation phase, um, and uh, that was Banda bin Sultan uh, and his father, uh, Prince Sultan bin Abdulaziz, was the defence minister of the Saudi uh, armed forces. Uh, but uh, Banda bin Sultan uh, eventually went on to lightnings and like a lot of the princes who were in the Air Force didn't stay there, they took on uh, uh, various government jobs of one sort or another and uh, uh, Banda eventually became uh, the Saudi Arabian um, uh, uh, representative in the United States for quite a long time. Uh, so that was a sort of an interesting connection as far as I was concerned on, on that tour. Uh, from Little Rissington uh, one uh, went on uh, to um, refresh on the Argosy. Um, I was promoted out of Little Risington, um, almost became a Prince Charles's instructor, uh, but not quite. Uh, I was on the short list of three. Uh, but uh, the result was that I was uh, promoted out of um, uh, the uh, Cranwell tour at the age of 27 uh, and went to refresh on the Argosy to take over as the uh, training flight commander uh, on the uh, what was known as the flight checking squadron that was the, the the role was to check out radars, TACANs and various 
uh, air traffic control aids, flying aids, uh, for their accuracy uh, and calibration, really. It was a calibration job. Uh, and then, uh, and they were based at uh, Cotsmoor, um, uh, along with a uh, Canberra squadron, which did uh, a similar job, uh, but uh, on those sort of aids which needed that performance type of aircraft. Uh, so I did uh, two years at uh, Cotsmoor, um, and it had, like everything else, has ha, ha, had ups and downs. Um, but I enjoyed the responsibility of, of being a, a flight commander and uh, centrally running a, a standards unit um, for uh, and converting uh, people to the role. Um, Following that tour, I was posted, whether I've been a naughty boy or not, I don't know, but I was posted on an unaccompanied tour to Mazira, uh, which then was an ARIA station, and Mazira sits off the south coast of Oman uh, in, in the uh, north of uh, the Indian Ocean. Uh, unaccompanied tour, uh, and it, although it's notionally a nine-month a nine tour, uh, I actually uh, did uh, 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 10 months there. Uh, in fact, no, 11 months I did there. Uh, it was the most interesting tour. I was OC Ops uh, and all sorts of uh, various aircraft uh, went through there. Uh, it was actually a dispersal base uh, for the Vulcan bomber uh, in the Cold War days. Uh, this was in the 70s. Uh, and as, as you can imagine, Mazira it was fairly dusty to say the least. Uh, and when the Vulcans, as they did from time to time, detached to the island, and then they would do a scramble, uh, and of course the whole place would go out in, this, in a sandstorm, effectively a sandstorm generated uh, by the Vulcans. It was a time to be inside to say the least. Uh, the fascinating thing about Mazira, uh, it, it's, I don't know if it still is, but it certainly was then a major uh, turtle breeding ground, or the, or, or the, the, the coastline was. And I, uh, I believe some, if I recall, some five species of turtle bred there, some far more than others. The main one that bred there was the loggerhead turtle. And of course, if one had visitors, it was always a good thing in the breeding season um, to take them down uh, to, to, the, um, uh, to, to the beach uh, and see the, the, the hen uh, loggerhead turtles struggle out of the water, uh, dig themselves a nest and then lay often up to 20, 30 eggs. Um, the locals of course that for the locals, that was the main source of food. Uh, uh, the, uh, and the other event within the turtle uh, annual cycle was, of course, the hatching of the eggs. Uh, and, and that was uh, very exciting to see these, these tiny little things uh, push themselves, as it were, uh, to, to the sea as fast as they could. But they had to pass a, a line of skua gulls, who of course would pick them off as fast as they could. Uh, and we, being uh, thoroughly unsporting, used to chase the skuas away to allow the turtles to get to the sea. Um, so that was, uh, that was one of those sites. The other most interesting thing that was going on at the time was that there was a, um, that, that Oman was under threat from, uh, what was then known as the PDRY, People's Democratic Republic of Yemen, essentially uh, uh, South Yemen. Uh, and there was a base, the RAF had a base uh, at Salala, uh, down just off the border between Oman and PDRY. Uh, and so one uh, was often visiting there in one's role as OC operations. Uh, and also occasional trips uh, into an, an in-country uh, um, strip 
And then also, again, uh, there was an aircraft uh, which was there for various purposes, but flew uh, once a week up to Dubai. And so it was, uh, I, I was there, I, much as I enjoyed Mazira, because it was essentially desert, if you like, uh, it was nice also to get into a place like Dubai, which of course then was very much a bazaar uh, with dows in the harbour, uh, nothing like uh, it looks today. But then doesn't that go for many cities uh, that, that have evolved in the last 30 odd years uh, tremendously. But it did make a, a breather, as it were, from the scene. We also had uh, a, um, as OCOPS, I was also deputy station commander, uh, and so one uh, retained a relationship uh, with um, the the senior uh, Omani there, who was known as a Wally. Uh, and, and it was always very interesting to be invited to the village um, to see various local uh, uh, cultural events, as it were. Um, we had, again, quite a... And I also then, when I was there, uh, learnt, uh, we had one chap who was uh, a fluent Arab, Arab speaker and uh, he used to have evening classes for those who wanted to learn Arabic, uh, which I did, uh, albeit it was learning to speak it uh, as opposed to learning to write it. That came uh, at another stage in my, my, my career. Um, but so, in, uh, although it was a short time, it was, uh, I, though it's nice to get back to one's family, of course. Uh, uh, it, it was, it, it, and I also then had a very young uh, son and a very young daughter, so it was, it, it was nice to get back to see them. They, they were, my wife, being American, had gone to America uh, whilst I was away in Mazira, uh, as indeed, of course, the children had as well. Uh, so it was very nice to get back to see them all again. Okay. So having returned to UK, uh, this was for my first, uh, I, I was going to say my first staff job, but in, in theory, uh, Mazira was a staff job or a ground job rather than a flying job. Uh, but uh, I went to Brampton uh, to be involved in flight safety. I was the squadron leader in charge, I had a wing commander above me, but uh, looking after flight safety for what was then uh, training command. Um, and I was there to about two and a half years. Uh, yes, I enjoyed the job. Uh, one of my roles within that flight safety role was to advise boards of inquiry um, n not to take the chair or to be president of the Board of Inquiry, but to be there as a, as a, if you like, a safety, uh, uh, an expert uh, um, in, term, uh, in terms of, of, of flight, flight safety as a whole, uh, the broad scene of flight safety. Uh, that was very interesting and indeed quite challenging. Uh, though fortunately, it wasn't exercised a great deal uh, because fortunately there weren't that many accidents. But there's, if I recall, there were certainly three that I was involved in. Um, other than that, it was fairly, a fairly straightforward tour, uh, but we did get out of the office. Um, one of the major parts was to go to various stations uh, in training command to do a, a, an inspection, a flight safety ins inspection. And that was, A, nice to get out, uh, and B, again, seeing the different way that people went about the same sort of business. I think that's probably the way the way to put it. Um, but it was a it was a it was a thoroughly enjoyable uh, two and a half years. And from time to time, one uh, got a flight. Um, if one went to a station, one indeed made sure one got a flight. Um, partly from a, an observer point of view, uh, and of course one was obviously taken for the flight. Uh, though when you usually got a chance to get your hands on the control column uh, or the pole. Um, but it was really to see the, 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 the flight safety, albeit in a, a, a very s a small uh, uh, flash of it, um, in the air, hear how it was being handled on the ground via the aircraft. Uh, but generally, it was a ground inspection of their whole, uh, their whole station's whole process of flight safety. 
So that was another enjoyable part of, of that particular tour, which came to an end uh, in the middle of uh, 1976. Um, and much to my delight, uh, I was selected to go uh, on loan to the Foreign Office uh, for a tour uh, uh, in Jeddah, the, when, the days when the embassies were in Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, and uh, as a deputy um, uh, stop. Uh, yeah. So uh, that was a posting then to, to the embassy, uh, the British embassy in Jeddah, uh, as the uh, as assistant defence attaché, uh, which w was most interesting because it, of course, covered essentially two services, but in theory, uh, the, the, the three services. Um, my boss was an uh, army. Uh, there was a, 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 a Navy uh, fellow as well, uh, and then myself as, a, 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 as across the board as, as the assistant, the deputy. Well, much to my uh, uh, pleasure, I was posted uh, out to uh, Jeddah. I'd always been interested in um, uh, over, uh, uh, international affairs. Uh, and going into different environments. Um, I was posted out as assistant defence attaché, which meant I had a, an interest in all three services. Um, uh, and I, there were two or three things, I suppose, which, thinking back, struck me there. One was, uh, although the embassy's largest speaking were all in Jeddah at that time, and this was in uh, mid uh, 1976, uh, the Saudi ministries uh, were all up uh, in Riyadh, um, a fairly straight road across the desert um, to actually go and do any ministerial work, or indeed, of course, one flew. In those days, one flew first class. Uh, I think uh, the foreign office has run out of money since then. Um, but uh, so that was always one thing, and I, I think the, what struck me hugely was the contrast in atmosphere and, if, if you like, conservatism between Jeddah, which was, of course, a port, had been a port for much of its modern history and therefore uh, was used to, if you like, coping with people from different backgrounds and cultures, uh, and Riyadh, which was in the middle of the desert, um, very much... Uh, uh, reflecting the, um, uh, for want of a better word, extreme, extreme interpretation of Islam, uh, uh, the Wahhabi uh, interpretation. So I think that was one of the things that struck me in the very short time I was there. Um, the other it, it's, uh, interesting thing was that uh, when uh, in the heat of, uh, of summer in the middle of the desert, the Saudi ministries moved to the, uh, I forget the altitude of it, but high up on the uh, escarpment, uh, which runs north-south along the west coast of, of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, to a city called Taif. Uh, and then, of course, rather than go to Riyadh to conduct business with ministries, one drove up to uh, Taif, uh, which was a fairly challenging, uh, given the style of some of the Saudi drivers uh, going up this hairpin after hairpin, very steep road. Uh, so that was something else which lives in my memory. Uh, the other uh, particular aspect was that uh, the British Embassy was almost on the doorstep of the Bin Laden uh, family's house. Uh, uh, people, of course, more than familiar with uh, Osama bin Laden, who was brought up by uh, his, uh, um, I think he was a paternal uncle. Uh, but the bin Laden firm were doing a huge amount of uh, uh, building, particularly road building, in Saudi Arabia, uh, based on the very substantial increase in oil prices and therefore the uh, increasing amount of income coming into the country. Uh, but uh, uh, and the old man bin Laden was very strict. He, he genuinely never did uh, uh, drink. Uh, whether it was we, one was invited down to his very substantial house, 
uh, or, or he was invited up to the embassy. But there was one uh, visit uh, that I and uh, my boss uh, at the time were making to uh, uh, old man Bin Laden's house and uh, three young men uh, who came in much to the embarrassment of, of Bin Laden, um, uh, somewhat worse for wear for the, the odd sip of alcohol. Uh, and uh, uh, one subsequently learnt that one of the, uh, we were introduced to them, uh, but then of course the name has since become, and one of them, he would have been about mm, 15 years old, I think, uh, was Osama Bin Laden. Uh, long before, well, he was obviously mischief-making then in the sense of drinking alcohol when he shouldn't have been. Um, and certainly his paternal uncle uh, thoroughly disapproved. Uh, but I think those are the sort of particular memories of, of, of Jeddah that I have. Unfortunately, I had to leave my uh, son, uh, who was, uh, happened to be in America at the time, uh, as a, a young eight-year-old, because uh, his mother was American, uh, became ill. Uh, and uh, therefore my tour um, to go back and support my wife uh, uh, and help cater with his illness uh, was foreshortened. So I uh, barely spent a year out on that particular tour. Yes, so having had a, a very short tour, um, as it was, it happened uh, after that tour in Jeddah, uh, I went back to flying, um, uh, uh, but in going back to flying, instructing at Cranwell again, uh, as I'd been off flying for uh, such a short time, it, uh, it only required a, a relatively short refresher course, getting back onto the Jet Provost, uh, before moving uh, into Cranwell to set up the third flying squadron um, in uh, what in certainly in my days, and I suspect probably still is, known as the junior mess or the, the officers side of the junior mess. Um, and that was an interesting challenge, um, but thoroughly enjoyable and, and very rewarding to, um, to, to bring a, a squadron of a disparate bunch of, uh, of instructors, uh, one or two newly posted in uh, most from the other two squadrons. So there's a reorientation, as it were, of, of loyalties, squadron loyalties. Uh, uh, thoroughly enjoyed that. Uh, and then, um, uh, as it, it was the case then, that the deputy chief flying instructor uh, job was always filled by someone who'd had experience, inevitably at Cranwell, as a squadron commander. And, and I was chosen then, uh, after a stint, uh, at uh, as a squadron commander of three squadron uh, was to then move into the deputy chief of flying instructors uh, role and again uh, thoroughly enjoyable um, uh, I, I have to say and indeed it was uh, as a result of, uh, of once presumably uh, doing a moderate job was awarded the Queen's uh, commendation of valuable services the air uh, in 19. 81. So after what certainly was for me a, a thoroughly rewarding uh, tour at, uh, as uh, ending up as uh, Deputy Chief Flying Instructor at uh, Cranwell, uh, I uh, got a slot um, at uh, the RF Staff College uh, and the, a course which lasted then from February 1980 to December 80. Uh, what do I say about Staff College? Well, I suppose you go to Staff College, you do the work, and hope you get a good posting after. Um, but it was a, it, it had, I'm being slightly facetious, there were some uh, most interesting uh, times there, lectures, talks, uh, and what have you. Uh, but I think in many, largely speaking, it's something one... Uh, looks forward to getting through and, and having it, putting it behind one. Uh, but for me, the uh, final highlight was uh, getting a posting once again overseas. And this uh, this time, uh, and indeed it was on uh, promotion, uh, was to the King Faisal Air Academy uh, um, just outside uh, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. 
Um, I was pleased to be back in Saudi Arabia, notwithstanding uh, um, what one hears of the strictness. Uh, to me, that was a fascination in living in such a very, very different uh, culture and approach. And of course, uh, being uh, indeed, I lived uh, in a, uh, a house in Riyadh itself. Um, so that made it very interesting. And I also had a, uh, a met a guy who is still a, a close friend, who, who ex army fellow, who, who was helping a minor prince to run a farm uh, south of Riyadh. So that gave one a nice breather. And he enjoyed uh, expeditioning out in the desert. So, uh, and he essentially taught me uh, very much about uh, the desert and uh, living in the desert. Um, the interesting thing, I guess, uh, at the King Faisal Air Academy, they had a, 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 the colonel who, uh, I can't remember whether he was commandant or he was a sort of senior, uh, uh, if you like, chief flying instructor. Um, the flying instructors were all largely retired. It was British Aerospace, as it was then, um, uh, running the contract to provide a flying training for the, the, Saudi, the Saudi cadets. Uh, and, and largely speaking, probably to a man, were all retired uh, Air Force pilots. Um, but it turned out this colonel uh, did not uh, like being advised. Um, uh, I think he, well, he, he considered it was somewhat colonial in approach on the part of having a Brit to, um, to, to advise uh, him, who had, uh, was indeed fairly pretty experienced. Uh, and he eventually managed to persuade, uh, obviously in first place, the, the Saudi Air Force and then the Saudi government uh, to, to uh, um, arrange to close down uh, the particular slot, the post that I was filling. So uh, my posting out to Saudi uh, lasted uh, uh, a year, April 81 to April 82. Um, but it was, whether one was very sorry to be leaving, um, uh, that's the way things go, I suppose, as the West say. I then went back, went, uh, came back to UK for a very short period, really was, uh, awaiting uh, a proper posting, was to uh, fill in uh, on a, a temporary job at uh, Headquarters Strike at uh, High Wycombe, uh, just for from May to September 82, before... Uh, much to my delight, uh, getting another uh, posting overseas, uh, and this time uh, to the High Commission uh, in New Delhi. Um, again, uh, uh, um, it, it was uh, India was very well. I hadn't been to India, as simple as that. But it um, again presented a different environment, a different culture all of which, uh, as I've said before, I very much much enjoyed being in. Uh, and that tour um, ran from September 1982 to April 85. Another of the things that always uh, remains in my mind uh, at my very short time in Jeddah, uh, it was legal for embassies to bring in alcohol, uh, provided that was brought in without any embarrassment uh, to, to the Saudi Arabian government. Uh, and uh, I always remember having been out on town, in town and coming back to the embassy, and our agent uh, was in a mild panic in the foyer, uh, the entrance hall, as it were, uh, saying, our furniture is leaking, our furniture is leaking. And of course, we bought our alcohol in as furniture, in other words, obviously big boxes and so on and so forth. Uh, and clearly some, some bottles have broken uh, and it was uh, leaking and that was down uh, uh, at the, uh, the harbour. So uh, there was great embarrassment there. Um, but of course, it, it, uh, it, it was not found out uh, or if it was, there was some discretion about the way it was handled. So I uh, uh, arrived in uh, New Delhi uh, as Deputy 
defence advisor, uh, uh, which is just a term used uh, in Commonwealth countries rather than attaché. Um, and defence advisor again, so I was covering or helping to cover all three services, which of course added uh, tremendous interest. Um, uh, arrived there in September 82 uh, and served in India until April 85. Um, my brief uh, allowed me to uh, get out uh, into, uh, and are into and around uh, the country as a whole. Um, a lot of my time was spent in the, uh, not as known as the Tar Desert, uh, that's the desert um, uh, to, to the uh, northwest uh, in India, uh, uh, covering the state of what is now known as Rajasthan. Um, uh, and that was most interesting. Again, nice to be back or have a lot of opportunity to get back into the, the, the desert, um, uh, travelling, of course, uh, in, uh, in four-wheel vehicles, um, coping with some of the sometimes erratic driving um, <laughs> by other people on the road. But again, seeing around the, the, the various villages of Rajasthan, um, my time also took me down to uh, the south um, to see something of um, research going on in, in the aviation world. Uh, and I do remember one, uh, I can't quite remember why I was there, uh, it was going to Goa. Uh, and Goa was a place where, in the days of the Soviet Union, uh, a good communists were uh, sent for a holiday uh, as a reward for being uh, uh, good communists. Uh, in the party uh, and I always remember uh, in the swimming pool there there were some how do we put it large ladies uh, in bikinis uh, who took great pleasure in leaping into the water uh, and talking about tsunamis created it did give one uh, the feeling that uh, uh, one could drown at any minute um, And the other uh, element, uh, part uh, that I travelled, uh, well, I say quite a lot, a, a lot to, was uh, into the Himalayas. And, and, and that uh, served as a, uh, a, a, a spiriting uh, introduction to, to the Himalayas. Uh, and indeed, in much, much later in life, um, I, I've continued to visit the Himalayas on various trekking expeditions or supporting my son uh, climbing uh, some of the uh, 8,000 meter peaks uh, and so on. But it was, it was again fascinating to see um, the varying cultures, uh, particularly as you got in the hills. I, I never uh, visited Nepal then, but have, again since in much later life, uh, was until recently a relatively reg regular visit visitor to, to to Nepal, but it was served as an introduction to, uh, uh, in the broadest sense, uh, Himalayan village culture of one uh, cultures uh, of, of uh, one form or another. Uh, yes, a couple of particular highlights. Um, during my time in, in uh, New Delhi um, was the Commonwealth Conference uh, to which uh, Her Majesty the Queen uh, visited uh, and I had the uh, honour of uh, uh, being her uh, ADC for uh, an award uh, awarding ceremony. Um, uh, another time, uh, which was a, a particularly difficult time, was of course when Mrs. Gandhi was killed um, and uh, again Princess Anne came out to represent Her Majesty uh, uh, for um, uh, Mrs. Gandhi's uh, burial ceremonies uh, and it was uh, uh, very fascinating and interesting uh, to meet her. Uh, 